Aloha everyone and welcome back to another Space Weather Update. My name is Alexis. This is the Ascension Diaries where we watch the Earth, the Sun, the Moon, the stars, and its effect on consciousness as well as my own. So let's get into it. Today's big news kind of came in last night, but we received a, a volcanic eruption basically from the Icelandic volcanic area. So that was the evidence there of the... I would say the earth crust responding to the solar wind is the best way for me to describe that for you. So when the solar wind is in, which it is right now, and I'll show you evidence of that, it's still here, it's still going, it pushes the crust around itself. And so we saw a huge earthquake in China right after I uploaded yesterday's video, a 6.0, it was in the middle of the landmass. To me, it made no sense and it wasn't near any fault lines. I didn't look deeper into it because my intent, uh, intuition was like, be careful. This particular situation is certainly a little bit spicy. And then we had this spicy event literally happen in Iceland that kind of helped draw the energy away. But I'm interested to see if the location in Iceland and the location in China perhaps are in some sort of geometric uh, relation to each other. And I mentioned yesterday the channel Dutch Since. He's on Twitter more but does YouTube videos and he has the models where he can see the effects of the planet getting impacted on one side and then shaking on the other and how that geometric and that fault line pressure kind of travels. He's got a much keener eye on that. And so I'm interested to see what he's going to say maybe about this. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. And I'll, I'll obviously repost that and I can add it to tomorrow's video. But beautiful site. Let's look at what's the trending topics at this time. Oh, things have already changed since I've recorded this video a couple times, unfortunately, but XRPL was on here. Now Kristen Stewart is on here, which is weird to me. <laughs> Shout out to Twilight fans. And the Vatican's on here. Shout out to Twilight fans. Just kidding, but for real. Those two things interrelated. Then we have UAP disclosure, which is, again, something that I got into really early and now they're calling it UAPs. We call it what we call it as experiencers. And going out there and finding other experiencers in their testimony has helped with this particular trend and kind of helped, I would say, smooth it out. Because real experiencers, you can feel their testimony. And I just want you to know that. So when you're watching new testimonies, don't look at where they are or how official it looks. Just feel it in your body and feel what resonates and what doesn't. Because there is data coming out. People are going to give you little itty bitty bits and you're, it's your job to put those bits together and make the picture because they're not going to do it for you like I do in this, these videos. Iceland is also trending. Makes sense. Timberwolves at heat. Kind of interesting. Uh, synchronistic why for, wise for those words. We'll see. There's definitely some heat going on here. And it is, I don't know if Iceland has wolves. I don't know. But the Arctic definitely does. But maybe not Iceland. They maybe got lucky. So the global consciousness today in response to all this from this, these earthquakes and this volcanic eruption, right? Uh, it could have been an actual coherent moment, which is fine. I mean, when the earth does adjust, it probably feels a great sense of relief and therefore so do we. So maybe that was that moment. I didn't check perfectly at that time, so I won't be able to tell you that. But <laughs> you can see the coherency has been very coherent and very uncoherent right next to each other in the last 24 hours. So that would have been a major mood shift you maybe experienced or a, a fight and a resolution. Now we have a little bit less variance, I would say, but it's still pretty variant. And again, the coherency as I'm filming is actually increasing. Oh, now it's going back down. Coherency is going back towards orange. <laughs> Come on, go towards blue. I want this video to do well. <laughs> so here on Space Weather News, where I was kind of giving them a little bit of, I was pushing back against their particular article yesterday that was claiming they were canceling the impact of the solar wind, even as earthquakes and volcanoes and the aurora and all of the evidence that it has arrived. So I wasn't sure what their point was, but they've moved on to talk about this Icelandic eruption, of course, over by Rick Jane's Peninsula, you know, and the Geldingalur, Gadalur, Gelding Adalur Volcano, Gelding Adalur Volcano. I know I'm saying that annoying amount of times, but that might be how you pronounce it. But if you're speaking to Gaia, I wonder, is that what she calls it? <laughs> what does she call that area? 
how does she refer to that spot? <laughs> I have these questions in mind. Don't mind me. I am a bit of a goof, but with I just get excited, you know, and it's exciting to see that this these you know polar stratospheric clouds were also something that people got to enjoy other than the aurora. This is in the, even in the daytime seeing seeing in a way the aurora still in the daytime, but in these high stratospheric clouds you're getting to see more color and more beauty from again this solar wind, which is really cool. Like I said, solar wind came in three separate times over the last few days, multiple waves of solar wind. You can see here where they actually cut the data three separate times, one, two, and three. So interesting how that lines up. But again, you can see the solar wind increased quite a bit and then dumped. And now we're missing data and the solar wind is kind of retraced back to where that was. So perhaps this particular section of data is just really struggling and it was just a steady wave. But to me, obviously this is scientific evidence that there was more complicated factors to the solar wind, but that doesn't bother me. Complicated factors doesn't bother me. I'm not scared of learning more and understanding complexity. So I would love to see that data in the future. Overall though, the pressure on earth doesn't seem to be that high, which is great. And when I'm checking no more solar flares, a couple, maybe a couple concerning sunspots for the next couple days, but nothing in the immediate that I feel like we're going to get flared again. And more so, I feel like we're receiving on the earth end of things and just adjusting with that volcanic and earthquake energy. You know what I mean? So just overall, Russia is showing a little bit in the atmosphere, a little bit more electromagnetic disturbance, even though it doesn't look natural. Italy is today showing almost no electromagnetic, you know, a little bit of evidence over the last few days. So yesterday had a little bit more than today. Heart math is still down and we're almost completely out of data now since they've shut down the last remaining square and data from the 12th there in South Africa, especially. So I hope that comes back online. The earthquakes are showing again that there was some activity and it was kind of a worldwide shake. You can see it in Russia and China. You can even see it in Mexico. You can see it in Puerto Rico, Venezuela, for example. Russia got a little bit easy, you know, but Kazakhstan still experienced it. So parts of Russia still saw it. But here you can see how these places and markers are all over the world, but you can see that there clearly was a moment where the earth shook or adjusted because it shows up pretty much on every one of these charts. So it adjusted and then it started spraying lava out of Iceland <laughs> after it shook the center area of China. And those of you mentioning that maybe those dams in China that are running the Bitcoin factories or whatever, maybe we're affected by that earthquake or maybe we should look into that more. I don't know if you saw any more evidence of that. I didn't, I didn't go looking for it, but I didn't see it pushed to me either on my feeds. So if there is something like that, please put a comment down below. I'm curious and keeping up on that particular narrative as well. And if you haven't gotten yourself with your crypto situation and you don't know how to start and you need the technical help, you can go to join.consciouscrypto.info to sign up Get that help, get those investments done, enjoy your money, enjoy your life, you know, whatever you need. We're happy to help. The technical part is sometimes the hardest, and so that's what we're here to help with. And if you need any sort of psychic help or you would like a five-week coaching package with myself exclusively, that offer is on my website now. If you haven't signed up to my website's email list, my emergency email list, just go right now, ascensiondiaries.com. This pop-up will come and it will ask you for your email. And of course, you can check out my Patreon or my Telegram in this pop-up also if you're not interested in the email section. Lots of options for you. I tried to make it super easy. I've been I've browsed on a billion websites myself, so making my own. Tried to make it easygoing and gentle on everybody. I'm glad that the volcano and the earthquake showed us what was going on. I uh, Let's look at the earthquakes really quick. No. Here we go. Over by China. So here we go in the center of China was this particular one I was talking about that was the superstar yesterday. So again, 
<laughs> not really that normal in my opinion to have earthquakes here. You can see very gently from the geography here, this is an interesting area of kind of mountainous uh, cascading down. So I watched the area, it's in a valley. It's over by, in a way, it's in its own little river valley that this activity happened. There's some lakes and it was more rural, I would say, that this activity was going on. But just typographically, it was an interesting spot to look at. You see there's a little bit of infrastructure over here, but really it, it was more rural. And it was. It was right by a road. It was like on someone's property that this happened, which was interesting. And it was about six miles down as well. So six, a 6 a 6.0 earthquake about six miles down. Oh, this one says, oh no, never mind. That's still correct. So that was interesting. So I guess after this video, we'll see what starts shaking next. And then you'll all be like, oh, Alexis, look at that. Oh, see, here's another one in the middle of the United States. Interesting how that happens. But a 3.9 in Colorado, unexpected. So yeah, when you're seeing them happening in the middle of the landmass like this, oh, here, look, another one over here. What is that doing? A 3.1. So that's always a little bit more like, what are you doing? This guy over here, over by Reno. I saw this alert yesterday. It was like, what? Spanish Springs, Nevada. Okay, sure, right? <laughs> There's a few more internally here, a few more in Texas, you know? So what was going on yesterday? A little bit of adjusting, a little bit of adjusting. Maybe they just have to do it manually, you know, to try and keep things running smooth. Just a few manual adjustments to embrace that solar wind. I don't know. It's a theory. It's an idea. It's kind of a logical path. Just just bringing it up as a thought, thought experiment. I don't need to be right. So loving you guys so much. I will see you on the next video. I just did the Guardian training update last night. We kind of reviewed all of 2023 and they are preparing for our 2024. So you go ahead to my YouTube channel and watch that as well. And uh, onward we go. Have a beautiful day. Beep, bubble, beep.